Hello, and welcome to the Airport News Show, a half-hour informational program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. The holidays are upon us, so on today's program, we'll be talking about some tips and suggestions that will help make your next visit to Jacksonville International Airport just a little bit less stressful. And here to get us started is a very important guest, it, Michael Stewart, who is the Director of External Affairs at Jacksonville Aviation Authority. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for having me this evening, Debbie. Um, now, later on in the show, we'll be talking specifically about preparing to go through the security checkpoint, but that's really just one part of the whole airport experience. So let's walk through some of those things that passengers visiting the airport can expect or should prepare for as they are preparing for their travels and i think a good place to start is with parking which is something everybody who's leaving basically needs to be concerned about it's very important especially this time of year because the uh, number of travelers is they're at the highest right. uh, point uh, as we get into Thanksgiving and, and Christmas time. So it's very important that uh, everyone allows just a few extra minutes for parking because their first option might not be available. Right, and I think especially for those business travelers that might be used to coming out and having readily available parking if they're traveling with their family over this time of year, those spaces might not be available as you mentioned. And particularly the least expensive ones fill up f first. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a special events lot and, and we'll be getting out some special announcements about those over the Thanksgiving and over the Christmas time period where we will have flat rate mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great bargain for those who are going to be gone for six, seven or eight days and they can take advantage of uh, a very, very cost-effective way of parking at the airport, but it also fills up pretty early. Right. Now let's walk through the different parking options that are available to the passengers. From what I can remember, um, <laughs> our economy lots are six dollars a day. Right. And our surface lot is ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Our parking garage, our daily garage it's called, is $12 a day and our hourly garage, maxim, the maximum in the hourly garage is $16 a day. So we have the full range of uh, parking options for those who want to park at the, the airport. Obviously the higher the cost, the closer you are to the terminal. And for those high rollers, especially in business, uh, we have valet parking for $20 a day. And like you said, the lots will fill up fast starting from the economy lot. And I believe once those economy lots are full, is that when they will open up the special events lot? Usually it's when the economy lots fill up that we'll open up the, uh, um, the special events lot. But sometimes, uh, since the traffic has a tendency to come in waves, mm -hmm. uh, that may happen all of a sudden. Even our hourly garage, because it is so convenient in, right. in terms of accessibility to the terminal, may fill up before the economy lot. Uh, so I, I, we, we just have to, to uh, caution people, just do not wait to the last minute if you're going to be parking at the airport. And I think it helps just to be aware that parking is a first come, first serve service at the airport. And so knowing that ahead of time, will hopefully alleviate some of the frustration of driving around if you can't find a place to park right away. Particularly as an aside, as we go through our terminal uh, expansion project that will be going on for another almost uh, a little under two years, mm -hmm. we will have more amenities in the, in the terminal where if you come early, you can enjoy those amenities. You can sit down and have a meal or or do some shopping, but we're still in that transition period where that's not fully available right now. So parking is important. Uh, if you can get a ride to the airport, that's good. So much the better. <laughs> yes, but uh, if you're parking at the airport, keep that in mind. Right. Now what about payment options? How, what are some of the different ways that passengers can pay for their parking? Well, a little over a year ago, we instituted what we call credit card in, credit card out. And this is the fastest ingress and egress 
for those parking at the airport. You can pull up to the uh, parking uh, uh, lot of your choice and uh, go to the credit card in line, swipe a credit card, go into the lot, and when you are exiting, you use that same credit card and you can swipe it on the way out. It uh, gives you a receipt and you're on your way very, very quickly instead of having to wait at the toll booth, run your ticket, get the amount, mm -hmm. pay the ticket, right. and get the receipt, and then go. So our credit card in, credit card out is a great option for those who want to use that for quick ingress and egress. Right, and if you still want to have the option to pull a ticket and pay cash or credit card using having an actual person process that. That option is still available. Always as well. available at the airport. Uh, the, we'll always have those toll booths with uh, individuals there for those people that would like to interact with someone. That's right. Have a friendly face to talk to. What about people who are picking someone up at the airport? They're not leaving, but somebody's flying into Jacksonville. Are there options available for those? I think this has been one of the greatest enhancements that we have incorporated at the airport. We call it the courtesy waiting lot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, what is the courtesy <laughs> waiting lot? Uh, it's a free option for those who are coming to pick someone up from the airport. Conveniently located, uh, only a two minute drive from the airport. So follow the signs to say courtesy waiting lot if you're coming to pick someone up. If their flight is delayed, if their baggage is running a little bit late, or if they're having to do something else in the terminal, you're not pulling on the side of the road to wait for them. You're not driving around in that continuous loop, causing pollution and congestion. Right. You can wait comfortably in the courtesy waiting lot, make some phone calls, read a book. And uh, it's particularly helpful if the flight is delayed somewhat and uh, you don't have to go back home or you could go somewhere else but the courtesy waiting lot is very very convenient and very very close for picking up and the person that you're picking up can give you a call after they've gotten their bags and when they come out on the curb literally two minutes uh, driving out of the lot driving around to pick them up and you're off and on your way and the courtesy waiting lot also has a nice big flight information display screen. What is, what, how does that help passengers? Well, it helps them by letting them know exactly what time the flight is uh, arriving during these congested periods of air travel. Sometimes flights are delayed. Mm -hmm. And also it lets them know that the, a particular flight has its baggage on the belt. So you can warm up that engine if you're anticipating meeting family members and getting ready to pick them up. So this is a, a very um, user-friendly enhancement in the courtesy waiting lot, a flight information display system that you can see from anywhere right. in the uh, courtesy waiting lot. It's quite large. And very large, very um, well lit. Mm -hmm. And also we have a uh, restroom facilities that are available for those who are waiting in the lot also. That's right. So it's very nice. And they, I've seen a couple of park benches out there, and you'll see people come while they're waiting and walk their dog and things like that. So it's a very user-friendly, comfortable, safe place for people to wait as for their passengers. Yeah. We really want to keep people from just pulling off the side of the road, which right. is a little bit unsafe, uh, causing traffic problems. And uh, we can keep the congestion down and and the, the guards will move you along if you're waiting in the baggage claim area. That's a restriction that uh, since 9-11 that uh, you're just not allowed to park there. So right. um, come to the courtesy waiting lot. Right. You'll enjoy it. And it's free. And it is free. <laughs> you can't no beat charge. the yeah. price. Well, as we're talking about parking and picking people up, we have a really special program at Jacksonville International Airport. Our, we call it the Preferred Traveler Program, which is part of the Transportation Security Administration's Registered Traveler Program. And it ha also has a parking feature attached to it as a membership. So can you briefly, we don't have a whole lot of time, but briefly explain what the Preferred Traveler Program is? Yes, we have three levels in that program. The first tier is uh, the silver tier, and that gives you access to what we call the short line uh, for accessing screening as you go towards your flight. 
Uh, the second tier, our goal level, uh, incorporates what we call Easy Park. Mm -hmm. And with the Easy Park, you have a special lane that uh, you can come through and with uh, radio frequency identification, the arm recognizes you or the gate recognizes you when you approach and it opens up, lets you in, you go park and when you're exiting, it recognizes you when you're departing, it bills you accordingly how much time you have parked in the lot and sends you uh, a bill on a monthly basis, but you can check um, anytime online to find out what that bill is. Okay. And our third tier, the platinum level, will incorporate the short line, the easy park, and a club that we are going to have in the terminal once we complete uh, our uh, terminal expansion. In fact, the club should be opening up late next year. Well, that'll be really nice. That's a real nice amenity, especially for the frequent traveler. Uh, it, is, it is an enhancement for those uh, uh, frequent travelers who uh, want to gain just a few minutes of time every time they're coming to the airport. And from what I understand, there are over 10, maybe 12 other participating airports uh, in the country, and it's a growing program. And especially now during the holidays when the lines do tend to be longer, that opp opportunity to go to the short line really pays for itself. Correct. I don't remember their website, but mm -hmm. um, if you recall, I uh, would we'll share that with our viewers. I think it's jax-vip.com. Correct. That's I think it. that's it. So, well, moving into the terminal, I wanted to talk just real briefly about a program that's coming up specifically for the holidays, and that's our holiday choral program. And I don't know how much you uh, know about this particular program where we have students come to the airport for a couple of hours during a two-week period and they have holiday songs and some of them perform. We'll have a couple of groups playing violins and this is a real popular op thing that happens during the holidays for passengers. Nothing like getting off a plane walking through our main courtyard and you hear children singing or playing and it just really makes the holiday more festive for the thousands of people that will be coming in and out of the airport. What I do know about the program, it is very entertaining mm -hmm. and those who are waiting in the courtyard area are just mesmerized watching the kids enjoy themselves and sing for uh, those who are waiting for their flight. So uh, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I, I kind of sneak out of the office and come oh, yes. over to the terminal <laughs> and uh, listen to uh, uh, the various groups that uh, come out and sing. Uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have the dates for those? Uh, yes, uh, actually our first group will be, it's a group of uh, violin players, student violin players. They'll be out there December 1st and then December 3rd through December 7th and again December 10 through December 14 from 10 to noon every day there are scheduled to be groups playing, and they're every half hour. Well, There's I'll mark my calendar changes. so I can uh, yeah. have my lunch over in the terminal. And, and, and speaking of the terminal, as we continue through terminal expansion, it is really nice to see the number of new um, places to eat, right. uh, anticipating new places to shop, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, ex it's an exciting time for us. It is, and uh, you mentioned a new one that opened that's become a favorite for a lot of us is Chili's 2, which is just past the security checkpoint. Very nice restaurant, and they're open for breakfast, so for those early morning travelers, that's a real benefit. And I think we're having another one that will open up before Thanksgiving. Um, Sam Adam, is it? Um, uh, Sam Sneed, I Sam believe Sneed's it is. Sam Sneed's Tavern right. uh, will be opening up, replacing uh, the, uh, the brew house. The brew house. So yes. before security checkpoint, you'll have a totally redone restaurant. And then just after security checkpoint, there's the Chili's, too. And, and as you say, a lot more coming. And I know we'll have a show in the future about that. So, well, Michael, our time is up. Thank you so much for joining me Thank today. Thank you for having me. And I'll see you back at the office. For sure. So, <laughs> so don't go away. We'll be right back to talk some more about... Preparing for the security checkpoint at Jacksonville International Airport. Stay with us. There's a place where a total stranger will give their blood to save your life. A place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. Where someone will give you food and shelter after a flood. 
That place is called America, where we look out for each other. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. Hello and welcome back to this edition of the Airport News Show. On today's program, we're talking about tips and suggestions to help make your visit through Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful during the busy holiday travel time. Now we're going to transition to a really important piece about preparing for air travel, and that has to do with preparing yourself to go through the security checkpoint and other security concerns at the airport. And Joining me once again is Mr. Ed Goodwin, who's the Federal Security Director of the Transportation Security Administration in Jacksonville. Welcome, Ed. Hi, Debbie. Appreciate you coming back again. Thank you. And also with us is Julie Moisen, a customer service agent with Southwest Airlines to give us an airline's perspective on Thanks preparing. for inviting us. Thank you so much for being here. Well, we talked the first segment about some of the other things that passengers have to deal with coming to the airport, but number one on everybody's mind, I'm sure, is going through the security checkpoint, getting ready to take the flight once you've gotten your parking and everything else taken <laughs> care of. So, Ed, let's start with you and Julie, if you have some suggestions to, before people even leave home, how can they prepare for their flight? Well. I I, I say it every time we, I come on this show, uh, the most important thing that a, a, a passenger will ever pack going to the airport is patience. Right. Uh, that's what they really need. Secondly, uh, I, I do tell them every time if they have any questions about what to pack, what not to pack, what they can bring, because there are limitations, mm -hmm. please go on the uh, TSA website, mm -hmm. www.tsa.gov, G-O-V. That'll, that is a very good website, explains a lot of things for people that have questions, you know, that may be traveling with firearms or things like that and may have some questions. And then thirdly, I tell people is before you start packing a bag, empty the bag completely and make sure that things that you have had in the bag, everything's out and start fresh when, before you start packing a bag. So those are some very, very important things. So uh, assuming we've gotten our bag emptied out and it's time to start going through, there's really two different ways to pack. There's your check bag, which goes into the belly of the airplane, and then your carry-on, which you obviously carry through security checkpoint and you take on the plane with you. So how, what do we need to know, first off, with our check luggage? Anything special we need to be aware of? Well, with, with check baggage for TSA, I, I, I always tell people that please put as many items and things as you can in check baggage. They're much less restrictive as far as prohibited items and things that you put through check baggage than are and certainly than those that you carry through the passenger checkpoint. So uh, from my perspective, it's just that if you, if you are in doubt, please put it in your check baggage and not try to carry it through the checkpoint. That's the same with the airlines mm -hmm. too. The best thing you can do is always call the specific airline that you're flying. At Southwest we have many different rules than any other airline does. Most people are aware of that. So you need to call ahead to your airline or check their website to see what your weight limitations are, oh, to see point. what you're limited as to if you are going to go on a hunting trip, what you can carry as far as a weapon and ammunition and any other specific items. If you're going fishing, how do you bring the fish back with you? These oh. are all items that things people just take for granted that they know, oh, we can just put it in our bags. But there's very specific ways to pack them. I never thought about coming back with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to find out off camera. Well, what, what do you do with a fish? <laughs> Well, you mentioned weight limits on your check bags. What about the number of bags, either checked or in carry-on? Again, the airlines are specific. Okay. Uh, with Southwest, we allow three bags. Most airlines are down, because of the new FAA weight regulations, we're down to 50 pounds is free. That's a mm -hmm. saying that everyone goes by. <clears throat> when you get over the 50 pounds, you're going to start seeing some excess charge for the excess weight, as well as size of bags um, count in, too. If you are traveling with sporting equipment, if people are taking those ski trips during the holidays, or if they're just packing extra presents to take along, there's requirements as far as for the size of the box that you can pack all these things in. And a so. lot of good information. So checking the TSA website and your specific airline's mm -hmm. website will save you a lot of grief and frustration when you walk up to the counter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What about carry-on? What are some things that people need to be aware of that you see regularly 
dealing the, with the, carry on. The biggest thing for carry on are uh, obviously the amount of carry on luggage you're supposed to bring through the checkpoint, which is normally it's one personal bag plus one carry on bag. Uh, and and the, the more people that adhere to that, then the faster obviously the whole process is going to go. Uh, the other big thing is that. Uh, Try to, try to be a professional traveler, try to be prepared. You know, sometimes if you have five minutes in line or just before you're going to the checkpoint, you can prepare enough to really be uh, someone that just breezes right through it without a pro and, and it's so much less stressful on you. And by that I mean uh, most people know that if they bring a laptop, the laptop is going to have to come out of their bag and be inspected individually. People know that their shoes are going to come off. If you can wear a pair of shoes that come off easily and go back on easily. And then certainly the liquids, gels, and aerosols uh, restriction. It has now been in effect for more than a year, for about 15 months. And that, uh, if you are going to bring that in a carry-on bag that through the passenger checkpoint, then there are specific things that need to be done uh, as far as how you package those and how you present those for, for screening. And I just happen to have my own personal sample that I use when I travel. <laughs> so this is what we mean by 311. So can you talk specifically about what the 311 means? Well, three meaning three ounces. Actually, it's 3.4 ounces or okay. less. And that's most of the travel size, mm -hmm. uh, any kind of uh, thing that you can buy travel size. Uh, whether that's shampoo, uh, shaving cream, things like right. that. There are 3.4 ounces or less that you can, you can bring through the checkpoint. And then that's a uh, one quart bag, right. plastic bag, and then one With per the passenger. Mm -hmm. You can't have 10 or 15 per passenger. Right. Right. And, that's, uh, and that's 311. That's packaged very well. I do notice that you have about four things of toothpaste in there. But, <laughs> well, uh, uh, you know, different people like different brands, so what are you going to do? But that's but. perfect. <laughs> and, and, the, and the thing to remember here and that people do forget, that needs to come out of your bag, whatever right. bag that's in. Uh, that's another thing that the people, you watch the people that know what they're doing, mm -hmm. they think ahead, they bring it out of their bag, they bring their laptop out of the bag, shoes come off, boom, they're through the line and, and they're off and running while, while other people are still struggling to take their shoes off. So uh, that's very important uh, that you get that out of the bag and present it for screening. And that's one reason to keep everything in a bag because you can just pull it out of your yes. carry-on, lay it in the bin, and then stuff it back into your bag once you process it. It is great, it. true. And, and, and yeah. just little things that we see, people forget about bottled water and things like that in their bag. And then that just takes time because yeah. now they have to call for a bag search. Somebody has to come over, take that out of your bag. And it just takes time. It delays you getting uh, getting through the checkpoint. And it can have and a ripple effect yes. to everybody else <laughs> waiting in the line as the, well. The ripple effect is incredible. <laughs> yes. uh, what 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 five seconds per passenger? I mean, you're looking at five million passengers a year pass through Jacksonville International mm -hmm. Airport. Five seconds per passenger uh, is is a, is a great amount. It's a it significant really amount, exactly. Okay, now what about gifts? This is the holidays coming up, and there's nothing more beautiful than a box wrapped with pretty paper and bows. What about gifts going through checkpoint or in your carry-on? Save it till when you get there. <laughs> we need to inspect them as an airline to make sure what you're packing in your box that we can take, that there's no hazardous materials as well as with the packages. If you're going to carry something through on the plane, TSA is also going to want to look at it. So don't wrap your presents before you come. Wrap them when you get there. Don't tape your boxes up before you get to the airport. Bring that roll of duct tape or packaging tape with you and tape it when you get there after it's already been searched. Very good. Good point to, to remember. Of course, now the trend is to use the gift bags. Mm -hmm. where you just stick them in there and yeah. that, that can be a nice alternative. What about getting ready to actually go through? If I take my bag out, I know my computer's got to come out or a video camera I think also has to come right. out. My shoes need to come off. What else do I need to do to be prepared to go through the checkpoint? Any kind of other electronic cell phone uh, will come off. I see, do see people, if you have a small belt on, normally a small belt won't set off the walkthrough belt detector. So, uh, and because we have second pass, which means if you set it off, you can come back through and take your belt off. So I do try to tell people that, that I would try it sometime if the line isn't long. If you have a certain belt, leave your belt on. You know, it's only one of those big belt buckles right. that'll set it off. If it's a small belt, it probably won't set it off, and that can save you time right there by not having, you'll see the more experienced travelers not take their belt off because they know that you know, a small buckle won't set the walkthrough metal detector off probably more than likely. Yeah. 
So, uh, but ju heavy jewelry and things like that, that's going to need to come off and certainly your cell phone, money clips, things like that. So just being prepared, especially while you're standing in line, uh, you just can't imagine how, how much smoother the process goes uh, when, you, when you take a little time, take two minutes to prepare. Right, and that can yeah. save you a lot of stress, especially if families, you're traveling with children, yes. and that's stressful in and of itself, but at least knowing what to expect before you come through. Now, uh, the technology of screening, I know that most people are familiar with the, the mag magnetometer yes. <laughs> that walk through and detects any metal on you, but we do have two other machines at Jacksonville International Airport. Can you briefly explain what those are? The trace portal machines, mm -hmm. uh, I think now most people that have traveled through Jacksonville now have seen them. We've mm -hmm. had them for a couple of years. Uh, essentially what that does, it will startle you. You go inside it, it'll blow, it essentially blows the dust off you. I, I'd hate to think that you have I dust on you, but you do. Say, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll, it puffs some air at you, blow the dust off you, suck the dust back in and then analyze it real quickly. It's a little bit, uh, it's a high tech way to do some real quick screening. And that method there, you don't, uh, you don't have to divest so many things and you can get through the line a little bit quicker, but it is a little bit different technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is one of the things that, it's, that are piloted at some of the airports, certainly not at all the airports. Right, right. And I assume that as the technologies advance, we may see some other pilot yeah, security our, our things next, going on. Yeah, the next on. pieces of equipment we'll get is the next generation x-ray equipment oh, okay. uh, that'll be coming out uh, that is a new stuff like that. But there is a lot of new equipment yeah. uh, on, the, on the horizon for, uh, for TSA. Which, which it needs to be. Technology needs to just keep pace with all exactly. the, uh, with, with the threat. Right, and, yeah. it's, and the whole point is to ensure as much as possible that everybody is safe. Yes. True. On an airplane, that's the whole point. Well, let's move on to some happier thoughts as far <laughs> as uh, the security process and traveling in general. Julie, can you speak very, very brief, excuse me, briefly about traveling with pets sure I don't I don't know what Southwest is but we have less than a minute so <laughs> what would you suggest for people who are traveling with pets during Ours the holidays? Ours is really easy we don't accept them. <laughs> oh you don't accept them at all? No, so okay really well that's another that, issue of yeah. just calling ahead each airline again will tell you specifically how you can ship them how they have to be created if they're allowed to be sedated or not sedated if their cabins are pressurized or not pressurized, which ours are not, which we don't allow the pets. Oh, okay. So it's, you definitely need to call ahead and make sure that your airline does accept you carrying pets. Now we do have the, um, the aid dogs, if you're right, seeing eye dogs, any an type exception, of, they're yeah. all the, always exceptions. Okay, so pack your patients, be prepared, and then enjoy your trip. Exactly. Well, Ed Goodwin, Federal Security Director for the TSA, thank you for thank coming. You. And enjoy. Julie Moisen, Customer Service Agent for Southwest Airlines, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to help all our passengers have an so. enjoyable trip. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Airport New News Show. We'll see you next time.